This lesson continues with editing tools, except now we will cover some of the more advanced editing tools, such as copying objects, not just single copies, but also how to make the copies in a pattern, grouping and combining objects together, welding tools, and how to adjust curves. There are different methods for making copies of objects. The most common method is by using copy and paste. It is very similar to other applications you have used. First, select the object you'd like to copy, click on the Edit pull-down menu, and select Copy. Then finally, click on the Edit pull-down menu and select Paste. You can also use the shortcut keys of Ctrl-C or Command-C on the Mac to copy, and Ctrl-V or Command-V to paste. Another method is to select the object to be copied, and then click on the Duplicate button in the tool group above. A third method is to select the object to copy, and click on the Replicate tool icon. This will open in the side panel different options for making duplicates. The choices are fairly simple. Duplicate left will make a copy just to the left of the original object. Duplicate right will make a copy just to the right of the original object. Duplicate above will make a copy just above the original object. And duplicate below will make a copy just below the original object. The second group works just like the duplicate actions above, except they will mirror the copy. The rotate copy options just below will rotate the object a number of times. If it is rotating one copy, it will rotate the copy 90 degrees, or perpendicular to the original. If Rotate 2 Copies is chosen, each copy will be rotated at 45 degree angles. If Rotate 3 Copies is chosen, two copies will be rotated at 45 degrees, and the middle copy will be rotated to a 90 degree or perpendicular angle. Rotate 5 Copies will angle the copies evenly over a 180 degree spread. The next group will make copies in a matrix style. You have a choice of a row of three, row of four, column of three, and column of four. The last option, fill page, will fit as many copies possible within the media page border. If we click on the advanced options at the bottom of the side panel, this will open the side panel with more custom options. In the Advanced Options side panel, duplicates can be made in a more customized way. You can determine how many copies, as well as the position of each copy. Custom Position will place the copy or copies, if more than one, in the X and Y distance relative to the original object's position. Finally, each copy can be rotated to a custom angle if needed. Combining objects can be helpful when there is a need to group objects together so that those objects will act as one. GraphTech Studio provides two ways to combine objects with different purposes. The first is to group objects together. It takes the selected objects and groups them together as if they were one object. The second method for combining objects is by making a compound path. This is similar to grouping objects. The difference is that the smaller objects that are within a larger object will be converted into holes of the larger object. For instance, here we have in the preview area two of the same shapes, each with a white fill and three circles. They are over a rectangle with a fill pattern. The top objects we will group together, 
the bottom objects will combine so that you'll be able to differentiate them. To group the objects together, select all the objects to be part of the group. Click on the object pull-down menu and select group. We could also right-click on the selected objects and a contextual menu appears. Then select group. The other way of grouping the objects is to click on the group tool icon in the tool group above the preview area or we could just press the Control G or Command G keys on our keyboard. In this case, we'll just click on the Group tool. Now when we move the objects around, they move together as one object. If we wanted to ungroup the objects, simply press Control U or Command U on the Mac, or simply press the Ungroup tool icon above the preview area. Let's go ahead and create a compound out of the objects below. First, we'll select all the objects, click on the Object pull-down menu, and select Make Compound Path. When this is done, the inner object or objects will act as holes so that the background object can be seen through these holes. The Modify Tool icon will provide options in the side panel to reshape the overlapping objects. To demonstrate how each option affects the shapes, we've created six sets of objects, each containing the same circle, triangle, and diamond. Clicking Weld will take overlapping objects and make one object out of the outline for all the selected objects, removing all the inner pieces. Clicking Intersect will leave only the overlapping sections of the selected objects. Clicking Subtract will remove all overlapping sections of objects that are in front of another object, so that only the object located in the back will remain and the overlapping parts of the bottom object are removed. Clicking Crop will remove all areas that are not shared by overlapping objects. Subtract All will remove any section of an object that is behind another object. Divide will create individual objects from the intersections of up to eight selected images. Each of these options can also be found under the Objects pull-down menu under Modify. The Eraser tool can be very useful for removing unwanted parts of objects. It can also create some unique effects to your objects or designs. When clicking on the Eraser tool icon, the mouse cursor turns into an icon representing the eraser shape that is set in the side panel options. To use this tool, click, hold, and drag the tool over the parts of an object you'd like to erase. To stop, just release the mouse button. The Eraser tool is unique in that it will react differently with open shapes and closed shapes. With a closed shape, it will keep it closed, and with an open shape, it will keep it open. It's a great tool for shaving off sharp edges, keeping objects smoother. The Knife tool, on the other hand, is similar in operation except it slices through objects. To use this tool, Click, hold, and drag the tool over the parts of an object you'd like to slice. To stop, just release the mouse button. Once again, open objects are kept open, and closed objects are kept closed. Some objects, such as rounded rectangles, text, and auto shapes, have to be converted to curves in order to edit their points. Keep in mind, though, that once shapes are converted into curves, they cannot be returned to their original state unless you click Undo. For instance, once text is converted into curves, it cannot be edited using the text edit mode to add or remove characters. In this example, we want to convert this text into something like this. If we double click on the text, it would place the text in the text edit mode. This is not what we want since no matter what we would try to do, we could not match the graphic design on the right. To achieve this properly, 
we would have to convert the text to paths. To do this, click on the object pull-down menu and select Convert to Paths. When it does this, it keeps the text group. So let's ungroup it by clicking on the Ungroup Tool icon. This will break the letters into separate objects. Let's start adjusting the text by double-clicking on it and moving the points. Now we can start working on the E by double-clicking on it and then moving the point. And now we can just finish the rest of the letters and there we have it. By the way, there is a quicker method to convert the text or any object into paths. We can simply use the Make Compound Path. Now if we double click on the letters, they stay together, but we can make adjustments using the points that are visible. All line points on object shapes and lines may be edited. As mentioned previously, some shapes such as text, auto shapes, and other objects may have to be converted to a path prior to entering the point edit mode. To enter the point editing mode, either double click on a selected object or simply select the edit points tool. This will open the point edit options in the side panel. Once in the point edit mode, any points of your object can then be moved around, separated, deleted, and added. Curves including arcs can be flattened, and lines can be shaped into curves. All these options can be found in the Point Edit side panel. For example, we have a square on the screen. Now let's click on the Edit Point tool. We've already learned how to move the points. Now let's demonstrate how the other Edit Point tools can be used. Delete Point will remove a point. This is done by clicking on one of the points and then clicking Delete Point in the side panel. If we hover the pointer over one of the line segments and then click, this will add a point. Break path will break a point into two endpoints. Right now this path is made up of straight lines. Let's change one of the lines into a curve. First click on one of the endpoints of the segment. When this is done, one of the segments will thicken, indicating that this is the segment that is going to be affected. If it's the wrong segment, click on the point on the other side of the segment that you'd like to make into a curve. Once the correct curve is highlighted, click on Make Curve in the side panel. The line will now have a waviness to it, indicating that it is now a curve. And there will be a bezier handle that is used to adjust the curve shape. To switch a curve to a line, click on the point, and then click on Make Flat which converts it to a line. To exit the point editing mode, you may double click on the objects again, or right click and select exit point edit mode. As you work in point editing mode, there will be times that the curves of your design need adjusting. GraphTech Studio works with Bezier curves. If you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, you're probably already familiar with them. The way they are adjusted is once a curve point, also called an anchor point, is selected, there will be two Bezier curve adjustment handles. Simply click on one of the curve adjustment handles and drag it up or down. As you can see, this will reshape the curve. Notice how the one Bezier curve handle affects the other handle. This keeps the curves on both sides of the edit point in alignment with each other, maintaining a smoother curve. In this example though, we want the circle to be reshaped so that it looks like a water drop. This means that we'll have to create a sharp corner-like curve. Right now we can't do this since both Bezier handles will not move independently. If we look at the side panel, notice that there are two types of curves that can be set. corner and smooth. Currently it is set to smooth. If we click on corner, watch what happens. The two Bezier handles now work independently of each other. This allows us to sharpen the top curve point. Now we can stretch out the top point, shaping the circle into a drop. 